Hey everyone, welcome to another Will I Buy It. In this video, we're gonna be talking about all the new makeup releases. I'm gonna be telling you if I wanna pick them up or maybe I'm not interested at all. And as always, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into the video. So if you haven't been on my channel before, my name is Marley and I love making YouTube videos about makeup and beauty. I love doing looks, swatches, reviews, Will I Buy It videos, all those kinds of things. So if that sounds good to you, then don't forget to subscribe. I usually upload about two to three videos a week and I would love to see you again on my channel. So let me just pull up trend mood. I always link all the Instagram pages that I read from down below. So if you are interested in what I get my news from, then that's always in the description box. You can check it out for yourself. There aren't a lot of things that I'm interested in, but I actually think that there are a few that I want to buy or... There's even something that I already bought. So that's more than what is usually the case. Usually I'm not that interested in most of the new releases. So uh, let's see. First up we have this new Il Maquillage and Carly Bible collection. I believe they did like lipsticks and lip liners a few years ago. Um... I'm not really familiar with this brand, haven't really tried the brand. Also, I haven't really watched any videos by Carly Bible. I'm not really familiar with her as a creator. I don't know if I love how this looks. I mean, I don't really love how those pans are organized in the palettes. We have like three face palettes in a light, medium and dark. I do like that. I do like that they didn't just do a one face palette in one colorway and then called it a day. I actually think this is a very good thing that they thought about different skin tones, even though it's a collab of one person. So that's a good thing, but I'm not really personally interested in this. Don't really like how it how it is laid out. Not really interested in the creator or the brand. So, so I'm gonna skip on this. But there are definitely some things about this that are kind of interesting. But I'm personally just not that into it. So we have the new BH Cosmetics Say It collection. And... We have six nine pen eyeshadow palettes that have really interesting names. I'm not really gonna say those out loud in this video, I think. Maybe not. But I'm generally quite interested in BH Cosmetics. I've tried some things from them that I've actually really liked. And I do have confidence that their eyeshadow formula is quite nice. But none of these color stories really speak to me. And I don't really see one here that I would really be into. I feel like some of them have a bit too many like repeat shades. Like the one that is at the top row in the middle. I feel like there are a lot of shimmers there that look kind of similar. And for 9 pen I would like a little bit more of a variety. And also that reddish one. I feel like that has a lot of shades that could have been a bit different. They could have done something else with it. And actually give you some more options in those palettes so i'm not really interested in this and i don't think i'm gonna be picking this up then we have the new hula contrast palette by benefit so they brought out those fluoroscope palettes with the blushes and the highlighters now they also have a contour bronzer palette and when i first saw this i was like why why did you do this why would you launch this who buys this it's just like no one is gonna use all those shades at least i wouldn't be able to use all these shades i just feel like the only people that could really benefit from a palette like this is people that do makeup on different skin tones but if you're just a consumer you just want some bronzer that looks good on your skin tone then you don't really need more than two like maybe a lighter one and then one that's a little bit deeper for when you're more tan I just don't really see the point of this it feels like they just wanted to throw in all the bronzers in one palette just to do it but didn't really think about if that was like the best idea I just really hope I just really wish that they would change the packaging I wouldn't mind trying some things from them I wouldn't mind trying some of the face products but I just can't do it they either have those box packagings or they put a lot of products in one palette where I wouldn't use like half of them so gonna skip on that one then we also saw the inside of the Prince and Urban Decay collab so they have two eyeshadow palettes one is a bit more neutral with some pops of like cool tones and then we have one that's more blue and purple these eyeshadow palettes will be 55 dollars each they also have some eyeliners highlighter some different things in this collection i'm i'm gonna stick with what i said the last time when they kind of sneak peeked it i just don't feel completely comfortable with them bringing out this collection where he doesn't have any say in it he can't really say if he likes it or not and it just feels like they are kind of like using his name to sell products but it's not really related to him 
if he is not alive anymore. That's just how I feel. Also, I don't think these eyeshadow palettes look really interesting. They could have done worse. It's not like terrible, but it just looks a little bit bland to me. Maybe it's nice quality. It might look better in real life, but just looking at these pictures, I'm not really that interested in it. And I just kind of feel like maybe they shouldn't have collabed with him. Then we have the new Morphe eyeshadow palette. It's an 18 pen sweet on hue artistry palette. And it has some neutral tones, but also some pastel tones. It has some pops of color. I recently did a video where I talked about brands that don't excite me and Morphe was definitely one of them. And I'm never really excited in their releases. And I always tell you that I'm not gonna buy them. And this is definitely also the case for this one. I just don't think that it would really add a lot to my life and I just don't really trust the quality. It's definitely not the worst thing they've come out with. It's good that it's a little bit of a smaller palette and we don't have as many repeat shades as we normally have with Morphe, but I don't really care about this. Let's just move on. So we have this new So Very Lovely collection by Colourpop. It's kind of like a half neutral, half pastel palette. And when I first saw it, I was actually quite interested in it. And I still think it's quite a nice, interesting color story. There are some pretty colors in this. But I think if I would cover up that lilac-y shade and the coral -y shade, then it would kind of lose its appeal. And those are shades that I already have. So my interest is more about the way they present it than what it actually is. And when I see swatches, I'm like, should I buy it? Probably not. But there's definitely something about this that I like. I like half neutral, half colorful palettes. And especially when it's a little bit of a pop of pastel, I can definitely appreciate that. This is just something that a part of me wants, but the other part of me is like, don't do it. It wouldn't be like the best purchasing decision. So, so I'm gonna skip on that one, but I definitely thought it was interesting when I first saw this. Then we have the Fresh Face Forward collection by Artist Couture. They have some powders, some prep and glow Blurring Perfection Primer, some Silky Lip Oil. I'm not really interested in any primers or powders right now. Not really interested to buy things like this. I guess it's good for the brand that they are coming out with these kinds of products. I don't really know a lot about this brand. It's just not something that I'm really interested in. It's just not something that I'm using right now. I just have one powder in a face palette and then one translucent powder that's just like in a compact and that's kind of all i need so when i see things like this i'm already i'm already like this is not gonna be for me then we have some new glossier this is the rich moisture balm wait what is this called ultra lip the buildable color of a lip tint plus the sheen of a gloss plus the rich moisture of a balm sounds good but it doesn't sound like anything i want to pay the shipping for and the taxes and everything for getting it out of the us it doesn't really sound like it's worth going through the trouble i think i can find things like this for cheaper, things that are more easily accessible for me. And I just don't think it's worth it for me to buy this, but it sounds like a product I would like if I would have it, but I'm not gonna go out of my way and try to get this. Then we have the new face and body makeup by Soul Body. So it's kind of like a foundation for your like body skin. And I think it's a good step for their brand. I totally understand that they're coming out with something like this. I'm not really into like high coverage products for my face or my body. I don't really wear foundation on my face and I also don't feel like I wanna put a product like that on my body, but I can totally get that this is a really nice product for people that do want some coverage on their body. So I think it's a good thing that they're coming out with this one, but it's not for me. Then we have some new additions to the Jelly Pop family by e.l.f. Uh, they have a Jelly Pop Watermelon Lip Mask, Jelly Pop Glow Stick, Jelly Pop Watermelon Glitter Mask. I don't really feel like I need any of this. It looks cute and I think that's kind of the point of this collection. It looks cute and summery, but I don't feel like I really... I just feel like it's more about the packaging and the vibe than the actual products. I mean, a glitter mask, I don't think that's really good for your skin. It doesn't do anything, it's just for like the idea of it and I feel like that's the thing with this whole collection so I'm not gonna be picking anything of this up. It looks cute but that's not enough to convince me to buy this. Then the Glamlight Red Velvet Cupcake Palette was revealed and 
you might know that I was really interested to see what this was like because I'm just really interested in glam light overall at this moment I tried their ice cream dream palette and from that moment on I was like I want to try this brand more because it's just so good so they revealed this palette and a lot of people were like where's the red I don't see any red it's a red velvet cupcake palette and there's only one red shade. And I totally get that feedback. I totally get that you were expecting that, but for me personally, for my taste, I like pinks and purples way better and I use them way more than red eyeshadow. So I was actually a bit scared it was gonna be too red, but there's only one red. So it's like, on the one hand, it's like, it doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, I'm like, it's better for me because I like these types of colors better. So I'm happy, but I get that it's a little bit weird that it doesn't have a lot of red in there. So I just think it looks like a really cute palette with some really cute colors. I see some looks that I could do with this. I think I could use this quite a lot. You can go a little bit more nude, a little bit more bright. Maybe they could have put in an extra deepening shade. It's not perfect, but I do see some really nice shades in here that I would like to that I would like to use, that I would like to wear and that I just would like to have in the Glam Light formula. So I didn't pick this up yet because on the Glam Light website, getting this from the Glam Light website is just really expensive. Shipping is $25. I wouldn't have to pay taxes, but like $25 plus $25, that's quite a lot for a palette that's actually quite affordable. I don't really feel like doing that. And in the Netherlands, we have some really great web shops where they actually sell Glam Light. So I'm gonna wait till it gets there. Then I'm gonna order it right away and do a review for you guys. But I didn't feel like it was worth it to pay like $50 for an eyeshadow palette like this that isn't that big. And that is actually quite affordable. It just didn't feel right. So I'm just going to wait for a little bit and then I'm going to be picking this up. I just think it's really cute and I really like that it's quite compact. It's a bit smaller. Then we have the new NARS Orgasm on the Beach collection. It's for summer 2021. And they have an Orgasm on the Beach cheek palette and a Jumbo Orgasm blush. I don't feel like I need any of this. I have never tried orgasm, but I also don't really feel excited. I mean, they have come out with so many orgasm collections and it's just nothing new. And everyone who wanted to buy it has it already, right? So I don't really get this. I don't get why they keep pushing the orgasm blush. Is this still selling? Are people still buying this? I rather would have seen something new, exciting, a bit more special. I mean, their collections always look a little bit similar, but this is really like lazy in my eyes. I feel, I feel like they haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this, developing this. They were just like, put orgasm on it again. Just do the things that we always do, just throw it out there. You know, this just doesn't excite me at all. And I feel like this could have just not existed and nobody would have missed this. I don't really get why some brands just keep pushing the same product. Just do something new once in a while. But you know, maybe it sells well. I don't know. I don't have the insight in that, but I just feel like this is pretty boring. Then we have some new eyeshadow palettes by P. Louise. We have a bigger eyeshadow palette with yellow, orange, red, and some neutrals. And then we have three mini eyeshadow palettes. One is more green, blue, one is more purple, and one is more pink. I'm not really interested in trying P. Louise. I've, I've heard some pretty good things about the eyeshadow formula, but at the same time, they're a bit of a problematic brand. And I don't really feel informed enough to decide if I want to buy from this brand or not. But in general, it doesn't really excite me. I don't really hate the look of those smaller palettes. I think the color stories are fine, but I also don't feel like really excited about it. I feel it's just this brand that doesn't make me wanna buy these things. I feel like if this were another brand, if this were a different brand with these particular color stories, with eight pens, maybe I would be more interested because I do like the colors in here. I do like the color choices. I think all of these three little palettes I could get on board with. I could do some pretty nice looks with. It's just this brand. I don't know about it. I just don't I just don't know how to feel. And when I don't really know if I should be excited about a brand, if I just don't really know about the brand, then even a really nice color story can sometimes not pull me in. Can happen if the color story is like really, really special. 
like there are some brands that i have never heard of but then they come out with an eyeshadow palette and the color story is so different so special that i'm interested right away but this is just like nice but not special enough to make me research this brand a bit more. Then we have a sneak peek of a new collection by MAC. I believe it's like the summer collection. And this is the highlighter in Fleur Cheur. I don't know how you... S I don't know how you say that, okay? Fleur Cheur? Fleur Cheur? Something like that. And the packaging looks really nice. But the highlighter itself doesn't really look interesting. I, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. And I'm going to see what the rest of this collection looks like. But I'm not going to buy things at MAC prices just for the packaging. I don't think that's really worth it. And also my experience with this type of packaging by MAC is that it's a little bit cheap. It's a little bit cheapy. And I don't know in that case if it's really worth it. But... We're gonna see what this collection is gonna be. Then we have this new Dolce Diva collection by Kiko Milano. They just released the Fruit Explosion collection. I just put up a video with those products and trying them out. And now they have this new collection already. They are moving fast. And this collection I was a little bit disappointed with because this looks a lot like the summer collection they had last year. The summer collection they had last year was called Lost in Amalfi. And it has the same colors, the same vibe, the same kind of products. They just changed it up a little bit. But just looking at the bronzers and the blushes, they just have a little bit of a different print on the packaging and inside on the product. But the colors and the shape of the packaging, that's all pretty much the same. So I didn't feel like I really needed this because it was so similar. And I feel like I just would be buying things that I already have. I mean, Kiko likes to kind of do themselves but not completely they always do like similar baked bronzers similar baked blushes similar baked highlighters if you missed out on the collection they will bring out something similar like in a year or maybe even sooner they just like to do similar products so even though i think this looks quite nice i didn't feel like i needed much of these products it's just too similar to things I already own. And also I feel like the vibes of the other collections that they have had. I like those more. This is just a little bit more... I don't know how to say it. It looks a little bit more cheap maybe. I don't really like the, the packaging... I don't really know if you can see it on these photos. But they have packaging with kind of like chains. Like golden chains around it. And I don't really like that. There's just something about this vibe that's a little bit less interesting to me than other collections that they have had. But I did buy something and that is something I don't see on the picture here. Oh, here it is. So they actually brought out liquid highlighters in a tube and the shades look really similar to Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Ones that have been sold out everywhere. And I actually want to try the Beauty Light Ones by Charlotte Tilbury. I would really love to do that, but I don't know when that will be possible. I mean, it's been sold out everywhere. And next to that, it's also a bit expensive. I remember looking at the Char Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Ones when they were still available. And I was like, I don't know if I should pay the price for them. And then, of course... Looking back at it, I regret not buying them at that moment. But of course, you can't always know if something is suddenly gonna go viral. But okay, so when I saw these, I was like, that's interesting. They are definitely inspired by those Charlotte Tilbury liquid blushes. And I want to try these to see if they are nice. And if they could possibly give a similar effect to those Charlotte Tilbury ones even though I don't have those and I can't like directly compare them but I still want to know if this is good because they were only 13 euros and that's a pretty good price it's like basically a third or something from the price from the Charlotte Tilbury ones so I was just like maybe this would be interesting to do a video on because they're definitely inspired it looks a little bit like a similar vibe and the colors look quite similar. Maybe this could be like a cheaper alternative. And then maybe in the future when I can actually get the Charlotte Tilbury ones. I can do more of a comparison. But this is just a different product for Kiko. This is just something different from what they normally do. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Also I've been trying some more liquid and cream makeup. 
and I just want to see what this is like. So that was a really long story about the liquid blushes, but I thought that was just pretty interesting. Then we have some new Quad Goals Multi Palettes by Morphe 2. This looks like things we've already seen it. It feels like a bit of a copy. It's not exactly the same, but it is definitely heavily inspired by some other brands. I'm not really interested in this. I don't really care. I don't really like this stack packaging anyway. Maybe it's nice to kind of take with you, but I don't like the idea of like opening those stacks when doing my makeup. I just don't love the idea of a stack packaging. I would rather just have an eyeshadow palette. So chances of me buying a stack like this from any brand are pretty small. Then we have this new mega eyeshadow palette, You Are Golden by Colourpop. I feel like this is something they've already brought out, but just with a pop of coral and a pop of blue. But if you put your fingers on that, if you kind of like think about this palette without those pops, that is really basic, really neutral, nothing really special about it. I see some repeat shades. I'm like, did we need all those shades? I'm not really into this. I think... I think we're going back in time. Like we have such a big palette with a lot of repeat shade, with a lot of neutral shades. And then we have one pop of teal. Not really into that. I would rather have more variations in the neutral shades or have some more colors there. Have some different pops. Have the options to do a more neutral or a more colorful look. I mean, just one pop of teal. I didn't think that was still what we were doing. This just looks really boring to me. I don't really like it. I think their other bigger palettes that they have done look a lot better than this one. I'm, I'm really just not interested. So we have these new The Puff Paint Liquid Blush Serum by Natasha Denona. There are three shades. One is Bloom, one is Daria, one is Tan. They are $22 each or $56 for the bundle. I've recently bought some liquid blushes from Kiko and I'm still trying those out. I'm still seeing how I like them, how I really feel about liquid products. So I'm not going to go out and buy really expensive liquid products. Although the price isn't too bad. I think the price is quite all right. I'm not mad at that, but I just want to try the things that I have before I go out and buy more. I just want to try those liquid blushes that I have right now and then see if I would like to get more. If I would like to get different formulas that are a bit similar. I do like the colors that we have here. We have a more neutrally nude one, we have a pinky one and we have a darker one. I like the idea of this but it's a bit too soon for me to go out and buy this. Then we have two new eyeshadow palettes by Colourpop. One is the fine feathered palette, one is the high tide palette. I don't feel like this is really new, this doesn't really look like something else, something special. It feels like we've already seen it. I do kind of like the look of that greeny one. It does have the types of green that I would like, but there's just something about this that doesn't complete me that doesn't completely pull me in. I would have to see what the swatches look like. I would have to watch some videos to see. I mean, I do think that there is a chance I would be interested in this because I do like these colors, but at the same time, it doesn't look that exciting to me. So a video or a review could make me more excited. I would have to see. If I really think about this, those colors in that green palette are the colors that I would wear. If I grab for green, if I do a more green look, then I usually go for like greens in like the teal zone, like a little bit more bluey green. I think that looks best on me. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this, but I'm not 100% sure yet if I would want this or not. And then by Siete London, and we have the Velvet Cloud Weightless Lip Powder. They will be 18 pounds each and we have a nudie brown called blissful a berry one called daydream and a nudie pink called heavenly this isn't the type of product that i'm really looking for now i would also be a bit scared that it would be too drying on my lips and i don't know i don't really feel like buying a product right now that i have to dip my fingers in in generally with makeup and beauty products i prefer if i don't have to put my fingers in anything so i'm gonna be skipping on this but i think there's a very particular public that will be really interested in this because it does look something that you can use for a very specific particular look. Then we have this new launch by Huda Beauty. This is a sister brand 
called Glow Wish. And we have some bronzers and we have some multi dew skin tints. So she's releasing a sister brand. I don't really understand fully why she's doing that or why is that necessary. I, maybe it's to make people feel like it's something new and exciting even more. Releasing a new brand maybe would be a bit more exciting than just releasing a new product. I don't know about this. But I personally don't really get that. Then the products, it looks a bit dated. It looks a bit weird. It doesn't look expensive. And I'm guessing it's not gonna be much cheaper than the brand that she already has. To me, it just looks like a little bit of a weird launch. I don't really like the packaging. I don't really like that swirl she has going on in the bronzer. This doesn't really look exciting to me. It looks like a picture from like the early 2000s. And it doesn't look like something that's been released in 2021. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I don't really like this. Then we have a new Skin Brilliance Facial Elixir by Makeup Geek Cosmetics. I'm not really interested in something like this. I feel like I'm naturally already pretty glowy. And especially if I also wear SPF, I feel like I'm glowy enough. I don't really feel like I want to add more glow. I'm never really looking for a glowy primer or like something dewy to put under my makeup or things like that. That's just not... It just doesn't really seem necessary to me. I feel like I'm glowy enough and I just keep it as glowy as it is. I feel like dewiness can sometimes be a little bit too much. Sometimes when I wear a really glowy cream or SPS or SPF, I just feel like it's a bit too much. So I'm not really interested in a product like this. Okay, something I forgot to talk about last time is the Adept Cosmetics Codan palette and it's launching Saturday, May 29th. It's gonna be $61. You can also replace one matte shade if you prefer with any single eyeshadow and then it costs $64, which is quite an interesting choice, I think. If I would want this, I guess I could see myself doing something like that. I feel like a lot of people are more interested in Adept for the really shiny shimmery shimmers. So let's see. This color story is quite nice, but I see a lot of shades here that I wouldn't wear. And then I would rather just buy a bunch of really nice shimmers that are my perfect colors. Or I just would buy an eyeshadow palette that really has enough mattes to make it like more cohesive for me. That makes it more like something that I could really create a full look with. So I'd rather just buy like shimmery singles or buy an eyeshadow palette that really has a color story and some mattes to kind of complement those shimmers. So this is not really a palette for me. I am kind of interested in Adept, but I don't know. Their eyeshadow palettes are a bit expensive and they would get a lot more expensive for me to get them here in the Netherlands. So I just feel like a shimmery palette with two mattes is a little bit of an awkward in between. I'd rather just have something with more mattes or just have no mattes at all and have it be more like a companion palette. I, I am interested in this brand though. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna wait and see if there's gonna be something that's more for me. Then we also have the Midas Cosmetics and the Basic B Perception palette. It looks nice, but it doesn't look like something that really fits my makeup style and aesthetic. There are too many bright primary colors in here that I wouldn't use. I, I just see a lot of things here that I like, but also a lot of things here that I don't like. And I think I wouldn't use like half of the palette, so that's not worth it to me, but it just, but it does look nice. I do like the vibes that I get from this palette. And I think people that are really, really into really bright eyeshadow will really like this. It's also $39. That's really not that bad. That's a pretty good price. It's quite interesting. It's just not my thing. Then lastly, I think, yeah, the last thing I want to talk about is the new Lethal Cosmetics launch. They launched three six pan palettes and some liners, some creme gel liners, I believe. The six pan palettes are going to be 26 euros and they also are going to have those six pan empty palettes and those are going to be eight euros each. I do like the color stories of these palettes. I do think this looks really interesting. I'm just not sure if I want to buy pre-made palettes from Lethal Cosmetics because I really like their mattes but I don't really love their shimmer formula. And I think I would rather just build my own six pan with the mattes that I like from these palettes. I'm just not entirely sure about their shimmers. They are like fine but 
Some I like a bit more, a little bit more creamy, some are a little bit more dry and I don't feel like I wanna take that risk and buy shimmers. So even though I'm really interested in this brand and I'm really interested to see their launches, I think I'm just gonna wait and see and then when there are a lot of nice mattes that I want, I will probably just make an order and just use their build your own palette and just buy those particular shades that I would really like. So that was everything for the new releases. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new releases. Do you agree with me or maybe not? Is there anything you want to pick up? I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!